If the Jesus you proclaim is not, first of all, the Jesus who takes away sin, then you do not understand the Jesus of the Bible. I came across this not too long ago on a church website, not a well-known church, but you can tell a lot about a church from what they put on their website. And this was in some of their beliefs. It said, what do you believe about Jesus? Jesus enters our church, it said, as a community. In the flesh and blood life and teachings of Jesus, we find a better way to be human. We believe Jesus to be historical, human, and divine. In Jesus, we see an embodiment of God that is unlike any other. In His humanity, we see a version of what God longs for us to become, fully loving, fully integrated, fully loved by God and empowered to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. I thought, you got human and divine, that's good. Missing quite a bit. Let, let's see where this goes. Next question, what do you believe about Christ? It says, our church is considered a Christocentric community. Throughout the New Testament, Christ was spoken of as the mystery, the divine spirit, power or inspiration fueling and empowering the church. For some New Testament writers, Christ was the force of life and compassion. Start to get some yellow flags when you use Star Wars terms. Mercy and justice that had always been permeating all living things in the universe from the beginning to end, holding all of creation together, we begin with the belief of Christ as the spirit that we invite to sit at the center of our community and our lives. And all God's people said, huh? <laughs> that, that's what you want to say about Jesus Christ? Permeating all living things, force of life and compassion, the center of your community? There may be some true statements there, but they're surrounded by so much spiritual pablum as to make the whole thing untrue. And what's missing, of course, and I hope you would spot it, if you were looking for a church somewhere, there's nothing about Christ as the sacrifice for sin. Yes, that may be offensive, but that is the offense of the gospel. We're not trying to be offensive. Some of us need to, you know, take a, you know, put a back seat to all of the ways in which we like to offend people, but that is the offense, always will be, always has been the scandal and offense of the gospel. You may have heard that quip from a uh, hundred years ago, I forget which one of the, the Niebuhr theologians said it about, about Protestant liberalism, defined it as a God without wrath, brought a people without sin into a kingdom without judgment through the ministrations of Christ without a cross. That's what passes for good news too often these days. You do not know Jesus as John the Baptist knew Jesus unless you know Him as one chief in His work who takes away sin. Do you understand what sort of Savior Jesus is? Or let me put it another way. Do you understand what sort of Savior you need? Yeah, Jesus is an example, but if that's all Jesus is, let's pack it in. What, what, who's going to live up to the example of Jesus? That's all you have with your Jesus? A life force? An example? A centering agent? He takes away sin. And you need to think, was John the Baptist right or not? Is this who Jesus is? Is this the Savior I need? Because if John was right, then your biggest problem and my biggest problem, it's not your lack of education. It's not the politics, whether you got the right people or the wrong people in there. It's not your challenging circumstances. Your biggest problem and my biggest problem, it's the same, sin. We're sinners and we need a Savior. 